what you're probably saying is why the hell are you doing reviews well i watched a lot of series and i thought you know what let's do a review on the recent series of the night stalker uh, or known as manhunt the night stalker season two um i do want to review season one but i don't know where you can get season one from um but i'm going to give you a bit of a backstory into season two and what it's about so uh we're going back to 2009 um the night stalker uh there's two night stalkers there's one in uh, the usa if you want me to review the night stalker series of that i will do that as well because it's on netflix and i've got netflix um, that's Richard de Merez. That's not the one we're talking about. We're talking about uh, De De Detroit something. I can't remember his second name. Give me a sec. So uh, his name was <laughs> Detroit Grant. I think that uh, D. Ro I can't say his name. Um, you can search it up. Do your research. Um, uh, but yes. Um, it uses a point of view of, um, you know, um, of uh, both point of views. Uh, in the first episodes, uh, we just, we uh, start learning about um, what this person has done. Uh, we hear some tapes way back in 1992 when the original case started up and between the late early 90s, late 90s and early 2000s um, and um, every now and then um, you know you can understand that uh, DC Sarton who's the character that's played by Martin Collins um, isn't involved and he wants to get involved um, and you can tell that he's this pan what's happened at the beginning um, is it's his last case uh, because he's retiring um, he's been probably a DC for a very long time I'm not too sure how long he was a DC for uh, and it was his last case and he wants to get this one really right and it's a um, it gives you a perspective of a police officer that's been in the job for a very long time who knows what they're doing but is part of this new team uh, in Lewisham I think that weren't given the insides straight away. Um, I think the first episode introduced everything well. Gave we didn't have any questions like what's going on. Uh, I think they explained everything very well. Um, it did piss me off a bit that they weren't letting him in DCI uh, Sutton at the beginning, um, but. It does portrayal um, when these police officers move up down the country. You know, you, you, you have your territory and everything. By episode two, they do let him in. So that makes it a bit more helpful for the investigation. And then he, uh, the original um, man who was operating it, I don't know his name. I, I'm not good with names, so don't ask me. You have to watch it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um to know names um had to go on this thing i'm not too sure i think it was like because he was injured or something or he just let them take over um episode two we get it inside of um what Sutton can do by himself um Nothing really much happened in episode two except for more um, cases and um, I think that was the episode where we saw the man saying that he was drinking out of the um, orange juice cart and if you don't know what I mean you can watch it on ITV Hub. I'll put a link down in the description below to ITV Hub so you guys can watch it on there. It's free and available. I think it'll be available for about a month because it's they give you. Um, hopefully, it's on there for a year, but um, I'll put it on there. Uh, it, there'll be a link in the description below to um, 
the series uh, and you can um, watch that series at any point um but yeah what was i saying uh we have one particular case where the person goes into the house uh does what he does uh, we're not i'm not going to say what he does because i don't want to it's a bit gruesome what he, he does um that was me coughing <coughs> god and it's very creepy because he drank the carton juice and the reason they hadn't have catched him is because his um what's it called his fingerprint hadn't been um picked up before so it's so hard to find a new person when they're on the run for at least a decade it's 17 years and um Everything from after the first case in 1992 um, is um, in 2009. So we go from him returning or making threats again. Um, and it's very interesting, the second episode. The first episode, I think, is interesting because it's an introduction to the series. And it builds up. It gets more and more and more scary. Uh, episode three, uh, I would, you know, episode, t I think it was episode two, I'm sure it was, yes, episode two, where we have, I think it's two cases, like the first one, that was on Judith Carton, and then there was this elderly woman, um, that goes into episode two, episode three, um, who passes away because she stopped eating. Now uh, the daughter who's all the way in New Zealand can't get to Eng can't get to England. And um give me a sec. I'm trying to think what happened. Um and it's quite interesting to see how it affect affected the people and and the victims families. Uh, and because these were all old people, um, it's um, quite hard to uh, talk to old people. Uh, and, you know, these victims were not young people that would be able to talk eventually. These are old people who would die because, <laughs> well... God's sake. <coughs> God. I'm coughing. I haven't got COVID before you ask. Um, where was I? Um, and these... Um, sorry. These victims um, were affected by this man exactly the same as the one in the US uh, and it was all old people um, and his signature the, the difference between this one the, the US one he had a signature the US one didn't really have a signature he just go around randomly um, and pff, what was it I was saying um, I think the first episode hits hard because you hear the tapes, uh, and it's, it was three victims that you hear stories from. Obviously, they're not the real people, if you're wondering, they're, they're probably not alive anymore uh, to tell the story. And that's the real sad thing, and that's why this documentary is made, because at the end of episode four, uh, it says this was in memory of the victims of the seri of this series of uh, attacks on these old people. And it does, the, the main message that's got to be taken away from this is people need to remember that these old people need to be looked after. Yes, young pe people and old people kind of don't get along because we're two different generations but we still have to look out for elderly because people still do this today and um 
I think it's a great message. I think with what's happened this year with the pandemic, it's they've done this the perfect time. And it's, it's not because people who do this stuff will do this after it calms down because it's the perfect time because people are too scared to go outside and will will stay indoors. Um, uh, but I think all the characters are portrayed well. You can really get an understanding of why the police station or the unit were not too open to DC Sutton. Um, that's the only name I can remember from this. Uh, and the we do in the um, I think it's the last yeah last episode we get a little bit of an insight into the actual. Um, uh, Cameron. Oh. What was I saying before my mum came in? Um, but no, uh, we get a little bit of an insight into the actual, um, what's his name? The robber and the, um, perfect. I'm going to call him a perfect because he is a perfect. Um, um, and, you know, what was, um... stupid about it is you uh, i bet you this was what he was like he's got the like tools in the back of his car and they knew it was him instantly because they did all this like tracking so if i go a bit back so by i think episode three they get uh into um the security system of all the seats yeah cctv in london uh and they it's like a proper investigation you know when you see it in like movies with fpi agents all around the corner uh it's a bit like that and they're setting it all up and it's quite a uh quite interesting that this investigation was um a same sort of investigation as i was saying before when do something um but no um it's interesting how they investigate this because it was such a big investigation they use it like a proper you know sort of when uh the secure they like secure everything off when it's like a big event for like um um what was it like a big event it was a bit like that, um, but it wasn't a terrorist threat, it was just a robber and uh, a therapy, and I think it shows you, when they did, when you uh, understood, um, you know, um, what was going on uh, at that point of what, these fittings have to go through you, you kind of understand yes it may be a bit of an overreaction using all this security and all this extra stuff but uh, they needed to because they needed to get this man off the streets um i found that bit really cool uh and how they did that bit you know they did the first i think it was like the first three nights and then they skipped a few nights later in episode four uh, so it wasn't going to drag out. They didn't drag it out. It was perfect timing. It gave you a bit of an insight. They gave you, I think, the first two nights and the first two episodes. And uh, they were so close in episode three to catching him. Uh, they, um, in episode three, the biggest jump scare came in. Um, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> uh, I think it scared everyone that bit. But it does give you a bit of an insight. It's and it built it built up you wanted to see this character uh and then you know there was a moment where they did a chase that was pretty cool um you know i don't know where how much this is real but i think it is mostly real i don't think they would uh they do say at the beginning that they've changed a few things to make it a bit more dramatic um so we don't i don't know which bits were more dramatic or not i think that bit might the chasing bit might have been a bit dramatic i think the guy would have been much more quicker um but the balance of it being uh you know to the facts and whatever they've 
added on. It looks more realistic. Um, I do like the characters a lot. Uh, and how they ended it and how um, it left off on a bit of, you know, Cliff Hannah saying whether he'll come back. I don't think he does because he's probably going to go off to the World Cup because his wife was saying, because it was 2009, was saying, because he's retiring, this was his last job. And he, his wife said, um, do you want to go out to South Africa to watch the World Cup? And it just makes me mem. It just, you know, it's pretty cool that they've got, like, history right. Like, they've got the... Because ITV always did the football fixtures back then. And it's really cool that they got that stock footage because it's part of like this ITV documentary, and it's really good that they made it so realistic. And that's some good history. I love the history. Um, you know, um, it's it's a good series. Uh, it's four episodes long. I prefer that than two or three episodes. They normally do two or three episodes. Four is good enough. I think four is enough. I think the first episode is a great introduction. The first, the second and third episode gives us a bit more insight. And the third one we start getting into the trying to get him. Uh, and it is a bit frustrating. I think episode two frustrates me the most. Because every time these fit, it keeps happening. <coughs> Sorry about this. I had a drink and I keep coughing. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I think overall, I think the series is really good. I think how they portrayed everything was really good. Um, normally with like these ITV series, they don't give you a bit more of an insight to the man behind it all. Uh, or the woman, depending on the um, um, this um, I'm gonna say he's an evil guy. He is a bloody evil guy, uh, but they gave you a bit of insight to Detroit uh, and um, D. Roy. That's his name, D. Roy. Um, and I think it's really good what they did with this series. So, my overall review, um, I think it was a very, very good series. Um, a bit of history behind what had happened. Uh, you know, the last episode when it all comes together and they find the guy, uh, it pisses me off because they could have could have found him in two fat They could have found him in 1999, so all they could have found him a decade earlier. Uh, and it just shows that it's very frustrating for these police officers and, um, you know, they were so determined to get this man into custody and he's now in custody that I'm so glad about. Uh, he's been in custody since 2011, from what I researched, a little bit of research. Um, do I suggest you to watch a series? Yes, and maybe no. If you've been affected by it, I wouldn't really watch it, you, you know. Um... If you want to be a police officer, I definitely would suggest it. If you want to be like a DCI, it gives you a big, really good insight into a really hard hitting career. If you like this sort of stuff, yeah. If you don't really like this sort of stuff, I say watch it because it gives you a bit of a message to look out for your elderly. And um, I think it's it's a really good series. It hits hard at points. There are some moments where it's really um, it, it's not what you want to know. It's not, but it happens, and it gives you insight to the victims. And this is why you watch this series because then you can learn from it. And there is a secret message. I think the message is to look out for the elderly, and I think police should do more for the elderly uh, and should look out for them because I've got tons. In my area, I've got loads of older people. I'm in the part of my town where there's a lot more older people. Um, and it could happen anywhere. And, you know, we have to look out for our audience, especially once this pandemic kind of calms down a little bit. And I think it will, it's calming down now. Uh, we have to look out for the people that we love the most. Um, 
another thing that I liked about the series is the um, uh, the partnership of Mrs. and Mr. Uh, Sutton. Those were the the wife and husband of the DC the DCI's wife. You know, knowing that she uh, was part of the first series apparently, uh, and seeing how they work together as police, it's really nice to see. Uh, and you know, um, she it gives you a good point of view from her point of view, uh, even knowing it's not about her, it's about the DCI Sutton's last case and making it big and making it go well. And you can tell that uh, it's really affecting him because these sort of cases do affect police officers. Like some cases don't, but these ones will affect you because they go on forever when you don't get much sleep. Buggering because he's it took him I think it was sixteen or it was sixteen nights of no sleep and just trying to get everything right and trying to get this guy. Imagine not sleeping for uh, two weeks and two days. It's really tiring and it's a great point of view from his wife's point of view. It's a great point of view from everyone's point of view. You do get understanding. Uh, and the night <laughs> he goes to sleep, um, they get him. That's how frustrating. And that's how it happens, you know. Uh, and we knew it was going to happen that way. Obviously, he was so tired and the um, one of the deputies came back and said, I'll oh, take the night off. And he did, and he had a great night off, and that was when his wife said, let's go to the World Cup in 2010. Um, uh, but, yeah, um, I absolutely enjoyed it. I really loved the characters. Um, every character, except from the person who's the rapist and the burglar. Um, I need to... F I, I don't know what other name you use, except from those. I don't know. Um... Um, was good. I think you you really do get a good insight, and that it, go, we, it was really good that they gave us a little bit of an insight into the man himself who did these cool crimes. So, my rating is going to be very hard because it is a real story, and I don't want to be too mean. So, I'm going to give this a good nine point two. Um. I do feel like a little bit more of about the person who did it behind, like a bit more of the interviews and uh, whether, I don't think they did interviews. I don't know what happened. Um, some scenes were dragged out too long, I think, at certain points, but not too many. Um, 9.2, uh, I think another reason it's a bit lowered down is um, <sighs> there was some really um ogarusome bits it's not because of that it is just generally because it's i i, I say nine point two. i think it's a good series anything above a i say a six or seven is good um it's an extraordinary series it's an extraordinary story and i think you know it's great to have a point of view from um, a police officer's station. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with um, what I've said. I don't know whether any of it will make any sense. Um, but yeah, um, I'm up to any options. If you want me to watch any series, uh, I will do series. I'm going to be doing... I'm, I've got... Three, I've got four series that I could do. Torchwood, Doctor Who, Waterloo Roads, and Lucifer. Those four series, I'm going to do them in separate series. I'm going to do like one per maybe a week. Like do first series of Lucifer. Go through all the series of Lucifer. Do that in one week. That may take me a hell of a long time though. So I'll do that. Uh, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, uh, thank you very much for listening to my review. Hope you have enjoyed it. Um, 
or before you watch the series, do remember it is a real life thing. Uh, I would suggest watching it. Link the description below to watch uh, uh, Manhunt, The Night Stalker. Um, it's a good series. Uh, if there's any series on Netflix, I can do Netflix um, and ITV Hub and BBC iPlayer. Those are the three streams where I can uh, review. Uh, I'm also going to review some classic Doctor Who episodes that I've got here that still work that I haven't watched ever or I've watched and I haven't reviewed because I'm going to do so many reviews. I used to do vlogs and yes, I could return vlogs, but I'm going to do this now because I think I'm much better at talking uh, and editing something and, you know, vlogs are too constant uh, and... I'll do, the flux will return later in my life, but right now I'm not really vlogging, if you know what I mean. I think flux are postponed for probably a few years <laughs> uh, until I get it. But no, um, I think there's some not really, uh, not like comedy moments, but there's some good like joke and banter, and it gives you a bit of an insight to the police officers and who are on this job, and I give them massive respect, because they were, they had to stay up for 16 nights, that's quite a long time of staying up, uh, and yeah, I've, I've rate this a 9.2, um, yeah, I'm probably gonna review something else now, edit this, get this up onto YouTube, and yeah, that's my review of Manhunt the Night, Ugh. That's my review of Manhunt the Night Stalker on ITV Hub. Link description below to watching it. Thank you and goodbye.